listening to Neo Cash Radio. We discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ, Darren, and Pedro. Scammers and hackers, Token Card has a boom and a bust, Ethereum is catching on, and much more on episode 205 here on Wednesday, May 3rd, 2017. In the traditional markets, we have gold down to $1,239, silver's down to $16.47, oil's down to $47.63, the Dow is steady at 20,975 points, and the 30-year Treasury is uh, yielding up a little bit to 2.969%. Excellent. And Bitcoin is up this week. It's a huge week for Bitcoin, 1485. <laughs> wow. Litecoin is also a big jump this week, up about uh, 25%, well, more like 30% from where it was at $20.72. Ethereum is up to $79 and just under 80 really. And it might go over 80 by the time the show is done. Um, Dash is at 88.93. Zcash is up to $90.68. And Monero is up to 25.02. And just a reminder that you can tune in to Neocache Radio every Wednesday night. Don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocache content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, and more. So, guys, yes, big week for Bitcoin, of course. Yeah. You know the there's there's everyone wants wants to point out a reason why Bitcoin is price is doing this thing and and really there isn't one specific reason and it's sort of like imagine where the price could be if they weren't having problems with the blockchain yeah it would be higher so uh, <laughs> but we have a bunch of stuff to talk about we're gonna have another update right here about Venezuela Maduro makes another power grab after a month of protests. Much like Hugo Chavez did in 1999, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has announced the creation of a new superbody of government called a Constituent Assembly. This new superbody would be able to radically alter or dissolve the current government structures and even rewrite the Constitution itself. The National Assembly President Julio Borges has called on the people of Venezuela to rebel. This is not good. No, this is not good news, especially after all the rioting that has already happened. And Maduro has just ratcheted it right up. You know, response yeah. is let's let's uh, let's cause more pain for some of these people. So um, unfortunate. Moving on, one coin scammers have been arrested in India. Uh, if you remember back in episode one seventy seven, where we mentioned the one coin was a scam, well, police in Mumbai, India, figured it out, and they've arrested so far eighteen people involved in the one coin Ponzi scheme. Associated bank accounts held nearly $3 million worth of Indian rupees. This may not be the end of arrests, as police are unsure just how many people were involved. So they're actively looking for more. Hmm. So it's it's good that one coin has finally got its comeuppance, because uh, for for a long time, obviously 177, that was um, almost, what, almost 30 years, episodes ago. Three years? Yeah, yeah. So that's quite a while. That this has been going on, and uh, hopefully people stop throwing their money at this, and they get get the, get the word out that this is not happening anymore. So, mm-hmm. uh, moving on, South Korean Bitcoin exchange Yapizan uh, Yapizan hacked for three thousand eight hundred and sixteen worth of Bitcoin on Saturday, April twenty second. South Korean Bitcoin exchange Yapizan had its systems breached by a hacker. At the time, Yapizan had more than 36% of their funds in hot wallets. The hacker was able to access these wallets and made off with more than $5.5 million in Bitcoin. The exchange plans to hand the situation, handle the situation similar to how Bitfinex handled their loss in 2016 by socializing the loss in uh, Bitcoin and issuing what they are calling FI tokens or FEI tokens, F-E-I tokens. So we'll see how that works out with them. Um... Token card, so yeah, so this is pretty big. Isn't yeah, it? we we talked about token card a couple weeks ago when we mentioned how yeah. the uh, the gold, the Digix gold was was looking to use a token card. Uh, since then, there have been a lot of different associations made between token card and various Ethereum tokens, including uh, I believe SWAT, um, Singles, and Golem, and and more. I'm sure. But uh, Monolith <clears throat> Ventures had launched their token card ICO initial coin offering on Tuesday, and it was over in about 22 minutes with, with over 20, uh, $12.5 million raised, mostly through Ethereum contributions. There have been a couple bugs, one which caused the tokens not to be issued to the contributor and another that issued too many tokens. Oh, man. Certain tokens would receive a bonus if the token 
contributed during the event was one of a select group. Uh, one of these, for example, was singles from Singular DTV. Well, one crafty trader found out about this error and capitalized on it with two contributions of singles worth a total of $432,000. In turn, he was issued nearly 6.2 million token, or TKN. One speculator suggests that the singles were mispriced by a simple decimal point error. Instead of being priced at 10 cents, they were priced at nearly a dollar. Decimal points are very important. Very important. Yeah. So this is a, a pretty big thing. They're going to probably have to reissue all the tokens. And I think that's the only way to do deal with this. Because you oh. can't just grab tokens out of someone's account. Because it's a push method, right? Right. So I believe what they're going to have to do is they, they know where all the donations came from. What at the address mm -hmm. uh, they came from. So I think they're just going to have to reissue... Make a token. new contract with a new token. Right. And, and just give the right and amount of that new just, token to everybody. Yeah. yeah, then just simulate all of this activity and then disperse those tokens. I mean, I think these ICOs are great, but it things are moving really fast. So we have, yeah. you know, raising almost $13 million in 22 minutes. Um, there's a lot of exuberance here in the space, and I think a lot of these projects are really, really cool. Uh, but some of them aren't going to pan out, and, and I'm just hoping people be careful. Well, this, in fact, is one of the few that I am I have become more and more interested in, and I'm really hoping that it works for them, because what we might see with this is the first token-backed or, or, or digitally-backed currency. Mm -hmm. So what the token would represent is a piece of the pie of the swipes. So every time someone uses the token card, the tokens that they use uh, collect a 1% fee. Mm -hmm. That 1% fee gets put into a pool where the value of the tokens, these, these TKN tokens, uh, is, is basically you are, you are able to burn the token to get a share of that, that pie, okay? Mm -hmm. So each token has a pro rata share of that collection of swipes. So every time someone uses a token card, once again, 1% fee, what token they used, it goes to this pool. It keeps all the different tokens separate in the pool. And you are your each token represents a slice of that pie. So in in effect, you have the TKN being backed by all of these other tokens and the value of those tokens. And any user can at any point burn their TKN token and get that those tokens, right? So they'll get their piece of the pie. They'll get sent. So, so they, they can burn the token to, like, cash out? No, it destroys the token, and it's irrevoc irreversible. So the token's gone, and they what do they get in exchange they for that They get token? their pro rata share based on the number of tokens in circulation that haven't been burned yet, and the total amount of that pool. They get their pro rata share of whatever tokens are in that pool sent to their Ether address. Hmm. So, which is amazing. So, so you're participating in uh, running the network, and, and the network has uh, fees of you know trans, you know this transaction one percent one percent transaction fee with every well, swipe. And then, so let's say someone spends a thousand dollars worth of tokens to do something with their token card. Well, one percent of that thousand dollars gets put in this pool. Yeah. And then your token, each one of your tokens has a percentage of that value. And you can burn all or none. But as you burn your tokens, every other token gains more value. Right. Bigger slice of the next pie, right? Right. right. And so the what you grows, see is yeah. you see a, a burnable to back, token back token. <laughs> the first crypto I can think of that is backed by other crypto. And that's that, backed that, by that's, crypto. That, it's backed by the, the algorithm and the code, right? Well. It's like you can, you can reimburse. You can get your crypto anytime you want. You just burn that token. Yo, dog. Very interesting. So I heard you very like, cool. And and I would say, JJ, color me skeptical. Okay, I. You know what? And and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with being skeptical. We, yeah, I think it's a I, healthy thing I, to do. I kind of want to be their customer. Um, I I think there would be very little risk at, in being their customer. You know, getting a card from them and using it. Well, I full um, disclosure, I I did send in a small uh, contribution to this token thing, and so I'm a part of. I'm going to see personally what happens okay. with this reissue. With your token back token. Yeah, and, and, and just the whole thing. So no, well, obviously with this problem, you know, it's going to be a very personal situation, and I'll, I'm going to try to share that with the listeners. But um, Yeah, definitely, JJ. I want to know what happens when you burn your token or if you if you sell at some point, which might be. Another and et cetera. 
And one of the most valuable currencies on earth is word of mouth referral. Please tell your fr- smart friends to check out our podcast and even friends that might be curious about Bitcoin and other things. But um, we, let's go. You've got a couple of stories here, Pedro. Let's talk about some of what you, you brought to the table here. Sure. So uh, Germany's energy giant launches hundreds of Ethereum-based electronic car charging stations. This is an article from Trustnodes.com. Wow. A subsidiary of RWE, one of Germany's biggest energy and gas providers with 30 million customers, billions of revenue, has launched hundreds of EV charging stations all over Germany connected to Ethereum's public blockchain. Describing the vision of the new enthralling future, RWE's representative detailed how block charge would work. By using a computer chip in the charging station, a smartphone app to communicate with the interface, and a blockchain to manage and record all of the payment and charging data, a fully automated worldwide authentication charging and billing solution with no middleman is now created. Uh, the app they're using is called Share and Charge. Uh, explaining the process, the website says that you firstly need to register your car, and then transfer fiat to the wallet. Afterwards, you just find and choose a charging station with costs transferred from your uh, share and charge wallet to the owner of the charging station. To finalize the process, a receipt is automatically sent via email. On the back end, uh, Ethereum's blockchain is used to transfer value and for record keeping. Wow, very cool. So um, my understanding is somebody that's using this, like let's say they have an electric card in Germany, they would just kind of use it and not even know that there's any Ethereum anywhere. Right, right, it's, right. And and that's, you know, that is key to to allowing a lot of this blockchain technology to really scale, you know, across, you know, just pop culture. Sure. And is to, you know, the best technology is the technology that's transparent mm-hmm. and just allows you to do what you want to accomplish. So um, um, I have a related story here too, Pedro. Very similar. So the Ethereum blockchain is being used by a branch of the UN to distribute aid. So uh, 10,000 people in Jordan will receive aid through the UN's World Food Program. The procedure requires users to use an iris scanner for identity, and then the vendor uses a cryptographically unique coupon to pay for the food that they sell to the individual. This is a test run, but plans involve scaling it up to service all 80 countries currently aided by the UN Food World, uh, World Food Program. So this is all done with the Ethereum blockchain once again. Mm-hmm. Right. And and by using, you know, blockchain, whether it's Ethereum or actually any of them, uh, you're saving a lot of money in transaction costs by not using traditional banking systems. So when, when the purpose of the aid is, you know, things like, you know, food for, for people that, um, you know, don't have enough, um, you want to be as efficient as possible. Um, the UN does not scream efficiency. Uh, so I'm really glad they're getting into this because, um, you know, again, any dollar they save in this program could be used to provide, you know, food. Yeah. It's unfortunate they have to rely on the betro- biometrics uh, iris scanning technology, but maybe, you know, maybe there's some, uh, I don't know, some connection made there between the person who owns that company and the U.N., but uh, moving on, you have a, uh, another story from Trust Nodes here, uh, Pedro. Sure. Um, so Ethereum Google search has spiked to an all-time high. This is a, an article from Trust Nodes, as you mentioned. Um, if interest in the Ethereum keeps keeps growing according to Google, Google search trends, which have recently seen a spike worldwide with the th- strongest growth in Ethereum searches shown in Switzerland. Uh, Switzerland's the country where the Ethereum Foundation is based and hosts uh, what's called the Crypto Valley. The second most interested country is Venezuela. Wow. Surprise there. Yeah. They have been going through some very difficult times, as we talked to earlier on the show, with inflation at high triple digits. Uh, Worldwide Google searches for ETH have doubled in just one week. The platform has enjoyed a multitude of positive news, which suggests its utility is considered considerably increasing. And it's also gained attention due to the many uh, initial coin offering sales raising mi- millions of dollars in minutes for, you know, for new enterprise. Yeah, so that's, it's, uh, in fact, one that just happened last week, and they're now starting to be traded about are the Gnosis tokens. And this is, as we said, um, I think we talked about it last week a little bit, but it's just so weird how the prices, are, it, it started trading around 90, between 80 and $90. But the thing is, is that, it's almost as if people thought all 10, 10 million tokens were issued or in circulation when, in fact, um, only a fifth, I don't know if 10 million is the, is the right number, but only, a f- what, 5% of the tokens were actually issued. Hmm. 
and the rest have been locked away by the development team for a year. Yeah, w- what I'd like to see is a website that you know shows prices and market cap of cryptos, but in addition to the raw market cap, um, that they actually split out like what is available publicly to be traded and what is locked away, because I, I think that's you know I think that's an important piece of information for anyone that might be interested in investing here. And, and we don't recommend any investments yeah, no. whatsoever. And, and that's actually hard to look up because you, if you know one, usually you have to go to their website and sometimes they're not that upfront about it and you have to really dig. And if you can't find that information, then you, maybe you should be a little bit uh, wondering what it is. Like, like there, there should be definitely a release schedule, whatever it is, uh, how these things are coming out. Sure, and, and who's going to own them when, and who's how, how, what's going to be owned by the public by when? So once this, that website provider is is available, we'll certainly have it here in, in Neo Cash Radio because I think it's important information to know for any one of these coins or tokens. Well, and I think that's a really important fact because with the recent token sale, the token card, the the actual the, the thing changed. So initially, they were talking about a cap of four point five million. And then they would let the trade. They would let the token sale go on for another twenty four hours. Once that number was reached, well, at the very end, they changed it to twelve and a half million cap, and then no additional time. There were a lot of people who wanted to get in on this token, but as you can imagine, they 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 finished the sale in twenty two minutes, and then you have twenty four hours from then. Just imagine how many tokens would have been created, right? And and if that were allowed to happen, you could have irrational exuberance and have all of a sudden now a company that is just starting worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Right. And, and maybe that's not appropriate right now. Right. Well, you get what happened with the DAO, which is you know, $150 million <laughs> <laughs> became a very tempting target. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, raising, I mean, some of this is being raised on a very good business model, a very good white paper, great ideas, but you know, some of these, are, are brand new companies without you know anything to show right now other than that idea and it's it's confusing too um, jj just mentioned the gnosis token and uh maybe about five shows ago pedro talked about the uh, what is it called Gollum token Gollum. yep and uh, i was just doing my uh reading and i i was it was easy for me to confuse the two I, i'm on a website oh gnosis that that, that and then i just associated that with Gollum. And uh, yeah, so it's very confusing. Gnosis is a uh, prediction market token, that's right. and Gollum is a token that's intended to be used as uh, as proof of uh, uh, providing computer services to uh, whoever wants them, right? And is willing to pay for them. It just it just seems like tokens are the flavor of the month right now, and everybody wants to have their ICO. And then look at my white paper, and then twelve million dollars later. It, it, I, I mean, I I can see it's very. It's very uh, interesting and attractive to people that are investing. Wow, if I can get in, I mean, you look at some of the other tokens and, and cryptos and how they've gone up and be like, well, I want to get in on that, you know, 10 cent a, a token price. And I want to see that go to like 10, 20, 30 dollars. Well, yeah, w- I mean, we'd all like to get in on that, but you can't sustain that continuously without, you know, some of these things failing and some of them will fail. Yeah. And and people should be prepared for that. So and, again, you, you should never invest more than, than you can lose yeah. and you should never take any investment advice from the Cash Radio. That's right. And we don't we yeah. don't give advice to buy or sell anything. And another thing with the tokens, there's no uh mechanism to make sure the business plan gets followed up on. Uh the, the and this could happen for uh different reason. Maybe somebody wasn't didn't have the skills to actually do the business plan that they proposed, or maybe right. there is a a hundred percent fraudulent business proposal that goes out there just to raise a bunch of ether, and then the person runs off with it. That that can happen with some of these contracts, not all of them, but some of them. Yeah, I, mean, just, I think an important thing is research the team. You know who who makes up mm-hmm. the team, who are the developers, what are the projects they've worked on. You know what's their reputation. Um, you know, and also initiatives that have actually something to show, even if it's in beta. So Gollum. I mean, they have a client they, that you can download and, and install and, and start looking at. They've got something. Um, it's not still workable, um, but, you know, that should be something to consider is when one of these companies comes out and they actually have something to show. They've actually done some work before the ICO rather than have the ICO and then do the development. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's better to have something to show for it than vaporware because, you know, that's, that's a big issue. Um, 
Darren, we uh, we talked about proof, uh, proof of stake coin last week. In fact, we talked about two of them, uh, the NXT and the Ardor. Mm-hmm. And um, so we found some some articles here. There, there was a couple of articles that were, were against proof of stake for various reasons. And then there was one that was pro proof of stake, although the article was kind of a little weak. But just talking in generality about proof of stake. So yeah. let's say I had a significant portion of NXT, for example. Right, right. And I wanted to uh, to sit there and mine and forge NXT until the end of time and try to grow this amount until I could just take over the network. Okay. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so you're, you're referring to this uh, article here at Cointelegraph where uh, the, the claim is made that, uh, that uh, proof of stake eventually will end. Right. Um, and uh, basically the argument... Uh, that's put forth is that if one person has a significant number of this token or 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 coin or whatever you want to call it, um, they can just sit there and forge or, or mine the new tokens and uh, eventually have fifty uh, percent of everything. Now, keep in mind with NXT, it's automatic pretty much. Once you have uh, a day's worth of confirmations and your balance hasn't changed. And your balance is over a thousand NXT. I believe if you're running the client, you will be forging. Okay. Like there's no cho- uh, choice. Now the difference we talked about Ethereum and the Casper uh, contracts. This is something where you are specifically uh, locking your Ethereum into a Casper contract for the purposes of proof of stake. So you actually have to take an active role in doing it, just to separate the two, mm-hmm. so that people understand that there are different ways of uh, yeah proof and- of stake working, but. For the NXT, you go on with that. Yeah, and and so uh, th- there were some numbers provided in this article uh, at Coin Telegraph, and some the some of the numbers are there's a billion necks that are available, like a billion tokens slo- floating around. Yep. And there's uh, fifty the the balance of the highest uh, the the address with the highest balance of these to- of these uh, next uh, is uh, fifty million. Okay. Fifty million. So fifty million is half five uh, percent of a billion, and uh, so I, I just did some calculations. So, and also a number in this article is that currently there's around six thousand two hundred next uh, that are available to the uh, forgers per day. Uh, so right, the way this works is only the um, only the fees go to uh, the the miners. There are no new c- creations. That's right. And on yeah, and on an average day, that that's what the fees would be. So uh, basically, this would be just a situation where you have compound interest because uh, as your balance grows, the amount of your proportion of these the these fees grows as well. And uh, so I did some calculations. So that works out to be around point zero 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 two percent a day. I, I might have gotten my number zeros wrong. And, uh, so for year, per year, I think it's like 0.2 per year. And, um, and then if you, uh, just solve the equation, it would take about a thousand years here. I got it on my calculator, 1051 years, uh, before you would have 50% of all the, so 50, not 51%, 50. Yeah. Right. 50. Well, once you have 50, wait a few seconds, you'll have a few more. There you go. Right. So, so, um, but, but, and, and that would be a concern if somebody had 50, of uh, these tokens, but I think, or fifty percent of whatever is uh, proof by stake uh, situation. But uh, um, I think that this doesn't really uh, jive well with human, uh, just just human behavior, human the you know, humans in their natural state. Sure. Are you are you is this person going to argue that as this becomes a million, as this person as this amount becomes a billion or whatever? If, as it becomes a, a larger and a larger amount of money, is 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 the person not going to buy a house? Not going to buy a car? Not going to like say you know you know buy something that they couldn't buy otherwise? Uh, to 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 imagine that somebody's going to just sit there and get more, and then just get more for the sake of getting more, right? Um, it it, it sounds a little preposterous to me, honestly. Well, okay, so fifty million NXT right now is worth, let's say, two and a half cents. It's you know not, not an incredible amount. Oh well, then I can buy half of them then, if that's it. I mean, they're they're right now NXT is selling for about two and a half cents. Oh, oh, they're two and a half cents a piece. A piece. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 
So, so yeah, that's not good. for all of them, Darren. Okay, I was like, <laughs> that was all. Of, if I thought it was two and a half for all fifty, no. Million. Okay, so yeah, so that's over a million dollars. Right, um, that's a significant amount of money. And in, in what you're saying, though, Darren, is you're saying that uh, human interest would would dictate that someone would spend the money before before it becomes worthless. Because as you approach that sort of asymptote of yeah. about fifty one percent. You approach that currency becoming worthless. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just your risk profile. If you if you start approaching half of all of the things that exist, um, you've you've got an, a tremendous amount of you're taking a tremendous amount of risk owning half of them. Right. Right. Because they, they, I mean, this is not like a dollar where the price is stable. This is something that the price fluctuates generally. And, yeah. And if you had that much of one asset, then a rational person would definitely buy different assets or a yacht or, you know, and, something. And, and as you approach, you know, 50% of, of ownership, like when you do decide to sell it, you have to sell it slowly, right? You can't just dump on the market or it'll crash the price. That's true too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I, I just think that this concern is. And let's not forget, you can only sell something as long as you can find a buyer. Yeah. Right. It, and I, I went through these calculations because if it came out to, okay, in 30 years, you could own half of all of them. Well, um, if, if that was the case, then it's in your lifetime you could own half of them. But if you're saying somebody's going to set out with a plan right now that a millennium from now they're going to own half, no. Uh, no, <laughs> no. And, and a million from now you think they're really going to be using this sort of technology? I, 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 Silicon-based computers? I, I, would, right. I mean, I mean that's, that's the other yeah. thing is as... Time goes on. I mean, look, these these coins are going to change, right? I, yeah. New ones are going to come out. Maybe some of the ones we're really familiar with will, you know, still be there as as very minor coins because something new and better came out. Right. And I think that I would be just ecstatic to be alive in a thousand years. Right. I, right. At this juncture in in yeah. history. Yeah. So, you wouldn't be worried about. So uh, if I was alive in a thousand years, I think that that's. That's the but tremendous imagine, amount of value. Okay, imagine by, being alive in a thousand years and being able to claim that you've done it. You've captured fifty-one percent of the NXT coin. Yeah. Then what? And you're the only one running the NXT. Now I can attack the network. Anymore. Now I can attack the network, and those fifty million dollars I have are now worthless. Right. That's a great idea. Well, Pedro, you got one more story here for us. Uh, what is this one here? Uh, so J.P. Morgan Chase and company leaves R3 Consortium. This is an article from ETH News. Uh, the fintech-focused R3 Consortium of banks has lost another big name member, J.P. Chase, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and Company, joining a line of major banks that have already grabbed their hats and headed for the door. Uh, J.P. Morgan allegedly found its goals to be inconsistent with R3's technological direction. The R3 membership pool has been slowly draining for the past few months. While R3 has embraced distributed ledger technology, it has designed its Corda DLT to function without a traditional blockchain and has explicitly stated, quote, we are not building a blockchain. JP Morgan has already invested in blockchain tech startups like Axoni and Digital Asset Holdings, and the bank is a member of the enterprise Ethereum Alliance. JP Morgan and Chase and Company seem committed to backing the blockchain horse. So a couple of years ago when... Our three consortiums started to come together. They they were looking at blockchain, but since then they've moved to a different type of distributed ledger technology. And going back in in late February of this year, um, the Ethereum uh, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance came out, and J P Morgan was one of the uh, you know one of the premier founders. And that consortium seems to be growing. So it seems like there's now a split. We have financial companies. Uh, there are still some that are in both the R three and the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance pool. Um, but right now there seems to be a, a bit of a split in the financial industry on whether to use this uh, distributed ledger technology versus a blockchain. Wow. That's amazing. Do we know anything more about this distributed ledger, ledger technology? Uh, I, I read a little bit about it a, a couple of months ago. It's um, it, it, They're basically saying it's, it's similar to a blockchain but without the mining aspects, but it, it is a, a different type of distributed ledger technology. I mean, I'm all for trying, you know, different things. Um, sure. But it, right now, the, the definitely the momentum in the financial industry is the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. They, uh, what they want to do is have private Ethereum blockchains running in their data centers so they can reconcile financial transactions amongst themselves. And they're committed to keeping the version of uh, Ethereum the same 
on the private chain as it is on the public chain. And the reason they, they want to do that is because they see all this development going on in, in smart contracts. So they want to be able to get talent um, that are building smart contracts on the, on the public chain and bring them in and, and develop the, using the same underlying technology version on the private blockchain. Wow. Well, we'll definitely keep in uh, touch with that sort of technology updates. And uh, the, the shift to Ethereum has been uh, just tremendous lately. The last, as you said, the, the the searches are up for Ethereum over the last what two weeks. The price of Ethereum this last week has just gone crazy. Right. Uh, along with the price, in fact, far better than the price of Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, but it's just the, it, you know, Ethereum is definitely one of the the top the top two horses, obviously. Okay? Right. And and. This, it's just like I compare the two chains, Ethereum and Bitcoin. The only thing Bitcoin has going for it is name recognition and is a slightly more vendor presence. Right. And, you know, it, today's market caps right now, so I'm looking at the prices live. Bitcoin is $1,502. So it's got a $24.5 billion market cap. Ethereum's price is just under 80 and it's got a 7.2 billion dollar market cap now this market cap was about four a week ago so it, it's it, it's tremendously uh, yeah. growing in value and that that's something that doesn't show up in the prices that there's so many ether um available that you, a, a price movement like this from what 50 to 50 70? to 50 to 80 is, yeah. is huge it's yeah. huge yeah it's, it's, it's extremely big i mean like um when dash went from 30 to 50 it, it's not as big a move as what ethereum's doing it i mean there has to be a lot more people behind ethereum yeah. at least buying ethereum uh to to justify that type of price movement where yeah. it, some of these smaller market cap things uh don't don't have that happen yeah the, the current available supply for bitcoin is um 16.3 million bitcoins and ethereum is 91 point almost 91.3 million ethereum so there's there's more ether out there so you're right when there's a a ten dollar move that's that's huge Right, it takes a lot more oomph, a lot more mojo to to move the price of Ethereum ten dollars than it does some of the smaller. Well, I think the the growth of Ethereum has seen is is very reasonable and very sort of it's much less exuberant than we've seen with Bitcoin's growth. Some mm -hmm. of the sh some mm -hmm. of the shot the times it shot up and then shot down and you know mm -hmm. it's just much more as ex uh, aesthetic. Mm -hmm. When I, when I think of Ethereum, I think of potential. There's there's so much potential with this technology, um, and and I th I think its price is is about right. I don't think it's over overpriced at this point. No, I mean I'm already I'm so excited just to walk somebody's dog with the Swarm City. I'm gonna yeah. do that. Well, I thought I, th <laughs> I I thought when it was at fifty, I thought that is a really good price for Ethereum with ninety one million in circulation. Fifty is a good price, but but ultimately between fifty and a hundred, I think. I mean, at this point, obviously, it's nearing 100. Um, but then again, remember, it's divisible up to 16 decimal places. So, you know, if that breaks down rather small. Right. Yeah. So you can have those micro transactions for the Internet of Things. Exactly. Right. I mean, people using it just to charge their car. Well, and, and a lot of the micro transactions might not even be a transaction of actual ass. It'll just be the gas price paid, and, and then the signature of this transaction is valid. Yeah. The, the, I mean, one thing I've thought once ethereum went live was that ethereum is going to generate its own demand for itself right you know it's, it's it's just like anything else you demand you generate the demand for and, it and over the, the next over the next few months there should be some really exciting ethereum news so the radon network is mm -hmm. expected to go live by summer and that's going to allow ethereum to scale um what they're what they're touting is it can potentially go up to a million transactions a second. Wow. Now, a million transactions a second is more than uh, Visa, more than Visa, it's Mastercard, like, Amex, all the all the major credit cards combined. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. And and it, it, Swarm City goes live June fifteenth, or no, Boardwalk, Boardwalk, the Boardwalk version. Oh, and j there's this other thing, JJ. What's that um, about this proof of stake? I don't. Whatever I said about proof of stake, I'm nearly not saying I'm for it or against it. I'm sure. just saying that. It seems to work. I mean, we, Pure Coin also is a proof of stake coin, and it, it hasn't been attacked in this way, and all that. Right. Stuff. We have yet to see a proof of stake or a proof of work system be. Well, no, there have been some fifty-one percent attacks back in the early days when 
coins were just starting out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, TerraCoin used the same hashing algorithm as Bitcoin, and so that m made a big problem because the ASICs would point to it, drive the difficulty up, point away, and and that was a big problem. Well, anyway, this is episode 205 for Neo Cash Radio. You can check out our website at neocashradio.com. As always, this is JJ in the studio. Darren. And Pedro. Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. Tune in every Wednesday for Neo Cash Radio. As always, you can subscribe to our podcast in a variety of different ways. Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. Wow. <laughs>